another thing that uh, is worth talking about is the uh, capacity payments. Um, the capacity, even in countries with re with very active day ahead exchanges, um, will will sometimes have limits on prices that can be charged in the the uh, as we as demand. Uh, increases and we need to draw in higher marginal cost units. Uh, many um, electricity exchanges and arrangements for uh, purchasing electricity on the supply stack will actually limit the uh, the how high prices can go in these periods of extremely high demand. And the question is why would, if, if the scarcity pricing story is um, sufficient to get the right of, amount of investment in uh, the right kinds of power plants, uh, the question is why would we ever want to limit the periods of peak prices that will limit the incentive entrepreneurs will have to invest in the relevant parts of the supply stack. And one reason is that sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between uh, a high price that is due to competition between firms and a high price that is due to uh, one or a few firms having market power. If for example, uh, a region is um, has a supply has a limited supply of electricity, but also congestion in the transmission between uh, this region and another region. There will be times when the price might be very high in this one region relative to other regions, because in order to supply the local electricity, we have to go farther up the uh, marginal cost stack in this region. And so we'll have really high prices in this region relative to what might be happening in other regions. The problem with this is it may be that this region is only served by one or a few providers. And this market may not be competitive and it, it'll be uh, a circumstance where the generators in this region have market power and are able to raise prices to levels that are not determined by uh, competition between lots of different providers. The scarcity pricing story depends on the price being the outcome of some competitive process of providing power. If the process is not competitive and firms are charging high prices because by reducing, by keeping their output constrained, they can have more periods of high prices, then the scarcity pricing story breaks down. And prices spend too much time at very high levels. And there's not enough incentive to build new capacity in these constrained regions. If that's true, then you can't take the price signal as a true measure of the scarcity of resources needed to um, uh, provide electricity in that region at that time. The scarcity pricing story depends on competitive market outcomes. If you have non-competitive pricing, then you no longer can uh, can draw the conclusion that the high price is due to uh, the need to draw expensive resources into the supply stack to, pro to satisfy demand. So one of the responses you might make is to limit, to put a ceiling on prices that might be seen as a reasonable constraint on non-competitive behavior. Uh, the problem with using a ceiling on price to limit non-competitive behavior is it reduces scarcity rents to all the other generators in that, uh, in that supply area. If you limit the price because you don't know whether it's competitive or not, 
then you're limiting the signals to entrepreneurs to build appropriate new generation in a region. And that what what you're doing, if we go back to the our picture of the of the supply stack, these lost scarcity rents are what are sometimes called missing money. This, uh, the loss of those scarcity rents is required to give entrepreneurs the necessary um, incentive to build new generation resources. If those scarcity rents aren't there, then some entrepreneur who would have built a power plant in that area is probably going to find it not worth their while to build a new power plant. And that's because there are missing scarcity rents that are needed to uh, make marginal units profitable to build. So this missing money problem results from limiting the price so it can't go, go above a certain level and not enough scarcity rents will, will be made to cover average costs of some power plant that would have been worth building. And the presence of this missing money problem gives rise to a need to do something else to ensure that we have the right amount of capacity built. And one option you have is to provide capacity payments outside of what are provided by the scarcity price of electricity, the marginal price of electricity in any given period. So if we're not going to allow the price to go high enough, we lose scarcity rents. To replace those scarcity rents, we're going to need to provide some payments to capacity to make up for the lost scarcity rents. Otherwise, we don't get enough generation built. Let's go ahead and draw, uh, draw our picture back where we have lost some lost scarcity rents. Here's what the price would be in a very high demand period. Here's our demand for electricity. Here's what the price would be. Uh, but we're limiting the price to something lower than that. So we have lost scarcity rents. This is the missing money right here. So when you hear about someone talk about missing money, that's the lost scarcity rents that are compensating all these other capacity units and giving entrepreneurs just the right incentives to build the right amount of capacity at different levels. So without this money, we have to find a way of making additional payments to capacity that can replace this missing money. And one way to do that is to have um, payments that are part of uh, power purchase agreements, uh, and we've already talked about those. Um, and these payments are not uh, are not equal to are not equal to the capital cost, but they supplement they supplement the payments to capital that are earned from uh, the prices that firms are getting prices that are not quite sufficient to justify building the power plant. So if we have if we, if we aren't giving entrepreneurs enough incentive to build the right amount of power plants, we need to think about some way of providing the additional revenues. And um, we know that the scarcity of rents are lower due to the limits on price. And um, so uh, the capacity payments are a way of making up missing money, well, how might you think about um, uh, how to decide what capacity payments are necessary? Well, you might leave that up to contracting and uh, power purchase agreements. Another way of doing it would be to have firms make bids for making capacity available over and above what they expect to earn in the electricity market. So. Firms will be earning uh, 
revenues by selling electricity, but we know they're not earning quite enough, so we can ask the firms to bid in an auction for making capacity available that will make up for the missing money. So sometimes you'll hear about capacity markets, and this is the idea of capacity markets. Com compensating firms for the missing money is asking them to say, what would you need in addition to the payments for electricity that you think you're going to get in order to make new capacity available? And this is what capacity markets are designed to do. Uh, to make up for the missing money by asking firms to bid uh, essentially a, an amount that's what it would take for me to want to build a new power plant given that I'm going to be selling electricity into a market with capped rates. And that payment will make up, in theory, will make up for that lost missing money.